All right, so today we're going to talk about filter delay. So if you're unsure about what are the best filter options for selection on your quad, well, stick around, Dorothy. We're going to travel down the yellow brick road and see if we can pull back the curtain on the wizard. Okay, so I developed this Excel spreadsheet to kind of add up all the filters that are available or going to be available in Betaflight 3.3, which is coming up for its official stable release. Less filtering is better. So the least amount of filtering you can have, that's the magic part. You know, reducing your vibrations from motors through soft mounting or just having better equipment, less coggy motors, things of that nature. You know, if the vibration's not there, then you don't have to deal with it and filter it and add all the delay out. So I'm gonna make this spreadsheet available. You'll see the link uh, down below. I'm gonna have that on my Google Drive account, and then I'm also going to put a post in RC Groups so that it's there forever. I'm sure eventually on my Google Drive account I'll take it off. But um, over the next couple of months, I'm sure I'll be updating this Excel spreadsheet. So I'm gonna have a version one, so if you go back and you see a version two and three, um, obviously there's updates there. I'll try to keep track of what generally the changes are uh, from one to two to three, so on and so forth. Anyways, um, the first part of filter de of delay in your quad is really your PID loop frequency. So uh, this spreadsheet, what you can do is go into each of the selection drop downs and then you can go ahead and pick different PID loops. Um, so if I'm, you can see I'm right now I have it on 8K. If I go up to 32K, you can see my overall um, latency drop just by very little bit. So it's the, the differential in milliseconds between 8K to 32K is really small and you can play with it and check it out yourself. The next part is your gyro. So your gyro, you know, an MPU 6000 gyro is sampling at 8 kilohertz and it's really what are you pulling that data off at? Are you down sampling it right off the gyro or are you down sampling it with your PID loop, you know, if you're running an 8K uh, gyro loop, but then a 4K PID loop. Either way, the gyro is reading at 8K, it's just where you're doing that downsampling. So you'd want to pick your MPU 6000. Now, a little known fact, and I didn't know this until recently, is that, you know, we have, there's a hardware filter, a, a digital low pass filter, that's what DL uh, PF stands for, is in the gyro itself and that has an associated latency of almost one millisecond. In Betaflight, we have the hardware filter set to off, but off doesn't mean off. It actually sets the cutoff, just like you would on a, our PT1 uh, low-pass filter. It, you know, we, the default for Betaflight is at 90 for the PT1 low-pass filter, which is up here. Um, it actually sets, when it's set to off, it sets that hardware filter to uh, 256. Hertz. Uh, there's an experimental setting as well, and I'm not actually sure yet what that does if that sets it up higher. For example, if you're on the, uh, if you have an MPU 6500 gyro and you set your low pass filter to experimental, that actually sets the cutoff at uh, 3600 Hertz. So you can play with that. B really really careful if you uh, go ahead and change that to experimental for either the MPU 6500 or the uh, any of the IMC processor chip or uh, gyro chips you can see it does have a significant reduction on the digital low pass filter delay uh, you're going to go down to 0.17 milliseconds in latency instead of the default almost one millisecond so you can see it has a dramatic shift there but um, go ahead and you know just be aware of that. So this filter sequence, how Betaflight operates is it filters out noise from the highest frequency noise to the lowest. So the in the filtering sequence, just to pop up a graphic of this, you can see this here is that you know we have the gyro low pass filter, hardware low pass filter, and then you have some debug mods, uh, debug modes here. You can pull out some data for black box. You have the new stage two, which Hopefully, we'll call, be called stage one in the future. Uh, the dynamic filter, static notches if they're on, 
then the classic low pass filter which hopefully in the future will be called stage two not stage one here and then it goes through the PID loop and then uh, your D term uh, has additional filtering your P and I do not but your D term does uh, just because of how it reacts to, to inherent noise so that's mapped through here and with this spreadsheet what you can do is turn on different filter so if I go ahead and turn that on you can see that will show up and this will give you uh, basically a graphic of how that delay is spread out through the, the uh, frequency spectrum. Hi it's Mark from the future so I'm going to give some perspective on frequencies within black box so here I have up my gyro trace and I have a gyro raw trace up as well and if I'm looking at frequencies in the spectrum analyzer, so I'm just going to look at my gyro trace and bring that up. And you can see this is after all the filtering. So I only really have low end noise here, and then it's really high amplitude. So what are we looking at? What is that? Well, if you can use your mark point in Black Boss, so just by hitting the M key, you can slide the, the analyzer over, and you can see that the apex from this peak in motion to this peak in motion is 2 hertz. It's 627 milliseconds in gap between the two. And that's what the spectrum analyzer is reading. And then when you have big, huge uh, jumps, you know, that's why this magnitude, if I'm looking at the trace for the roll, so this is a roll move, that's why that magnitude is so high, it's really off the chart because it's low frequency high amplitude motion not just noise all this other stuff down here you can see on your gyro raw this is low amplitude high frequency noise that we want to try to get rid of and that's what the filters are attacking so you can literally see if you you know fly and have some prop wash that you know is in a certain section you can go and just use your mark point to measure it and measure the the apex to apex of the motion and see what frequency that's at. One thing uh, you can also do is you can look at your filter delay by looking at your gyro debug mode of notch and then also look at your fully filtered gyro data coming out of it. And if you can pick points that are the same piece of data, you will be able to see how it's delayed. When you are doing that, you do need to keep in mind the sampling rate. For example, the sampling rate on this trace is one eighth, so it's, it was set to uh, one kilohertz sampling rate, but that one kilohertz is derived is basically a, a denom based on your gyro loop frequency is, which is eight kilohertz, so it's one eighth, one kilohertz out of eight. But then that is multiplied by your PID loop frequency, so you only get 500 hertz. So if I zoom into this and do a marked point, and then hold down my Alt key and hit the right arrow, you can see the lowest I can get is 500 hertz in between data points and that's equivalent to two milliseconds so when I'm looking back on my Excel sheet if I'm trying to see what the differential between half and I can't do that on this trace because I didn't sample it fast enough so the faster you sample your gyro or your black box data the more you can kind of thread that needle and look at that stuff now when you're looking at all this we only really care about motion or, or the frequency spectrum of 0 to 20 hertz and anything from 20 hertz up to 100. 20 up to 100 is prop wash so your prop wash handling can get into those frequencies so if this uh, motion is delayed which it is you know it's going to be by turning on um, well you got one millisecond just because of the the gyro low pass filter and then you're going to have another 0.6 at the lowest band, at the lowest frequency hertz, and then you know it kind of starts to taper off. So you can see right at the default here, you know if you look down on the right, we're getting 1.71 milliseconds of delay by having those two filters on. And you can see how even you know at higher cutoffs, you know this is a 260 uh, cutoff, so that's that's pretty high. In my last video, the recommendation is really to have that at 90. Well, you can see at 90 hertz, bam, that really pops that delay up. Now, let's just set this up. The reason I 
have all these turned off is because you know it, it, the graph gets more complex and I didn't want to start with a very complex graph. So as of right now when you look at the data provided by the devs on phase delay for the new filtering it primarily matches the PT1 filter. So that's where in that video my last video I said you know if you want to use this new filter and your copters flying well on 3.2 you can use it as a substitute and there's some data out there now that shows that it cuts harder twice as hard at 90 Hertz so it would do a better job at dampening noise what as of today as of this evening there a question is still out there for me at least is does it have the same phase delay because it seemed to have the same phase delay as a PT1 and if it's doing a better job at filtering well good because the phase delay is the enemy and you can see that the math down here here's we calculate the phase delay which is somewhat complex math on second order filters but the first order is not and then you know, the equation to convert that phase delay into a milliseconds delay is, is fairly basic it's just this equation right here so you can get an, a sense of what that delay is uh, we can turn these on and off so let's go ahead and turn this off for now and turn on our our classic PT1 which is the default in beta flight then we're also going to turn on our notch 1 filter so notch filters uh, work a little differently you can see they have a lower uh, phase or lower delay than a low pass filter at the lower noise levels which we care about and this is essentially the same graph that's just looking at total filter delay here instead of individual filters so these will add up and it's just graphing out the total and we're kind of looking at this band like I said this is the raw motion of the copter this is the prop wash part of it and as you can see a lot of times you'll hear about well the higher the notch filters are or the narrower they are if you have the static notches on at all the less delay they have so let's just look at that so if I set this to 500 Hertz and hit enter you can see as this goes up for its peak um, notch or peak cutting uh, of where it's going to dampen your motor noise that the overall delay goes down so the higher this goes the better obviously you're setting that right over motor noise so you really don't have much of a choice it is where it needs to be uh, based on your inherent motor noise but also if you can narrow this down the defaults are it's you know subtracting off 100 hertz so you can see if I ch change the cutoff frequency instead of having it 100 hertz down from the center and I change that to be 50 hertz down so I'd change this to 350 how that more narrow notch decreases the amount of delay so you can you know instead of just guessing all this stuff you can start to use this to kind of see the differentials of everything and that's my intent uh, what I did over here too is that there's tool tips so when you click on any of these it tells you what the beta flight defaults are so let's just get this set up to what the defaults are holistically in beta flight so turning all these filters on I have them at their defaults here and you can see when you're setting all the filters up in their default state uh, when you flash the board you're getting around you know I don't know uh, seven point well it's right over here um, seven point six one milliseconds in delay so how can we make that better well one of the first things we can do is the dynamic filter we can turn that on now this one's tough uh, for me to model in here because it's dynamic it's moving around all the time I'm gonna do a video on where you can look at the debug mode FFT in black box to get a sense of where that notch is and um, at least the center frequency and there's some direction on how wide it would be at the bottom of this Expel spreadsheet uh, from the person that really helped uh, develop it uh, right here so you can take a look at that so you're you know you to really thread that needle you'd have to look at that debug mode and kind of set this on the average of where it's generally fallen for you uh, by default if you turn on your dynamic notch um, I, my recommendation is you can then go ahead and turn off these static notches so by doing those things you know now we're down instead of 0.761 uh, now we're down to 6.8 uh, 
seven. So there we go. We've increased our uh, performance efficiency of our quad. Uh, if you have a quad that's fairly noise free, you've soft mounted, you have good motors, good equipment, props aren't beat up, the next thing you'd want to do is go ahead and set this to PT1. You can see the difference between a bi quad uh, low pass filter on your D term. Now, this is just the D term, but nevertheless, total delay added by filtering, it drops it down by quite a bit. So, by changing that D term low pass filter from, like I said, from bi quad to PT1, that dramatically dropped our noise down to 5.28 milliseconds. The next part, and you know, you'd want to fly that, make sure you only fly for 5, 10 seconds, land, feel your motors if they're good to go then take off again, do a little bit more aggressive flight, really feel those motors. If everything's looking good, nothing's super hot, the next thing I'd recommend is going and turning off your D-term notch. So we'll go ahead and turn that off. And you can see now that drops down our noise. And uh, now we're down about 4.81 milliseconds in delay. So that D-term notch helps some. The next parts you can do to this is really start to uh, bump up these low pass filters if you can. Uh, I generally think this is where people are going to end. They're not going to have uh, they're going to have a base level of noise that they're not going to be able to bump these up too much. But in some cases, you can bump this up to 110 and bump your initial low pass filter up to 100. And those two things will shave off some some delay. So it's really up to you and how you know. Is that little bit of delay that important to you or not? And then again, uh, and it's still in release candidate testing, but you can also turn off you know, your, um, your classic PT1 low pass filter, which there's options in the sheet to set that to bi quad or refer to model that as well. And then you can turn on the stage two and then you know do the same. But again, this sheet is gonna model the stage two and the stage one at the same. This is basically modeling as a, a PT1 filter, which if this is set to PT1, it's the same thing. Uh, the sequence does matter though, because this filter, this low pass filter is now prior to the notch. So this filter is whacking down the noise by half at its cut point at 90 Hertz. Then the dynamic notch is doing its job. Whereas the other way is the dynamic notch is doing its job to try to dampen noise, then the low pass, then this uh, stage one low pass filter with the PT1, wherever its set point is, it's knocking down the noise by half and then progressively more uh, outward. So there's just a quick little run through of this sheet. Again, links down below. One thing that I've I tell people that hey, if you're increasing your PID loop frequencies and your quad is picking up more noise. So one question I got was, okay, well, how does increasing your PID loop give you more noise? And I'm going to use the Joshua Bardwell reference. Imagine you're in your car, and it's how quick you're looking up from your phone. You know, if you're looking up every once a second, right, that is that fast enough to, you know, control your car and stay on the road. Well, if you look up faster every, you know, millisecond, well, you're going to be able to see every little bit of steering change in your vehicle. So you're going to pick up more micro turning within your car. You have a faster sampling rate. So faster sampling rates introduce more noise into your PID loop calculations. So if you are you know, increasing your PID loop frequency from 4 to 8K or 16 or 32K and you have all this more noise, well notice if you go up in, in frequency um, from 8k to 32k you only drop your latency down you probably couldn't even see the graphs change here they just hardly move up or down so that's good if you can do that and keep your filtering the same but if you have to dump a ton more filtering on top like say you'd have to do the uh, stage one and stage two low pass filter on top of each other and then set this to this is the basically the recommendation is you'd set this to um, 
90 hertz and then your stage 2 to 160 or essentially putting over in motor noise so you could say it's 160 or uh, some quads it's going to be 250 something of that nature you know are you so now we're 5.21 milliseconds of latency now I'm on a 32k sampling rate so let's now go ahead and put that back to 8k let's just leave this on on turn this back off now we're at 4.66 so at 8k we have less overall latency from getting the detected motion to adjusting it and getting new data out to our motors than if we were at 32k with additional filtering um, some people are going to argue with me and say no mark you're wrong there's there's a lot of other factors into it I'm not saying I'm the expert on it but from my observation there it's you know if it's all about getting the motion calculating a correction and getting it out to the motors by increasing your PID loop frequency to this super fast rate I think the caveat is hopefully you're not picking up a lot more motor noise you have to dump a ton more filtering on because if you do it kind of offsets it but you guys you have these tools go out do the test for yourself makes it don't just listen to me um, that's just my thoughts on it as of today and I again that could be wrong all right thanks and I hope this helps